attempt to adjust your audio settings. Your system is working at optimum capability. There is no need to look over your shoulder, just relax. Breathe. It will all soon be crystal clear. There we are. True Horror Stories of Texas, Shadow People. Tonight's story comes to us from a young woman from the Rio Grande Valley who wishes to remain anonymous. Make sure to keep the lights on for this one. I lived in these apartments that were fairly new. My roommate, My roommate at the time, time was a bit of a player and had many girlfriends, some of whom I found to be a bit odd, but that's neither here nor there. One day, quite suddenly, he decided to move out and live with one of them. We hadn't had this apartment very long, so I was a little shocked by it. I decided to move into his old room because it was bigger than my room. The first night I spent in my new room was scary. I felt like something was in the room with me and I saw shadows on the wall. I tried not to pay too much attention to it, but I wanted to run out of there. I really didn't get any sleep that evening because I could hear my coffee table being dragged around in the living room. I was too scared to check. The next morning, I found my furniture intact in its place. I met my old roomie for dinner that evening and asked him about his room. Did you ever have any strange experiences in your room at the apartment? He just stared at me. After you moved out, I decided to move my things into the bigger room, and, and that's the first night I just felt like I wasn't alone. Like someone was there with me. Did you ever experience anything like that? He just stared at me for a moment, dead silent. After a bit more coercing, he finally told me that the shadows, just scare me. The shadows would scare him at night, and he didn't want to scare me. I had my boyfriend stay with me that night, and we stayed in my old room. We could hear thumps, wall scratching, and footsteps in the apartment. My boyfriend went to check out the room, and it seemed normal. After that evening, I decided to perform a rebuking prayer in my apartment to try and ward off whatever it was. In the name power and authority of Jesus Christ the Almighty, I renounce any attacks of the enemies of God. I renounce the presence of any enemies of God. I commend them to be bound and rebuked away and never return. Holy Ghost, please empower this prayer right now. Whatever it was, it left me and my boyfriend alone for almost a year. And for the first time, I felt happy and safe in my apartment. But it was short-lived. The shadows came back and would now appear to my boyfriend. I didn't see them this time. I would have horrible nightmares at night and would wake up with scratches. My boyfriend didn't want to come over for a long time because he also woke up with scratches and a voice telling him, F you, right by his ear. I would hear my name whispered by my ear. One night, I felt the presence of something there, but I ignored it as my bedroom door opened and closed. I heard heavy footsteps in my living room and it made its way into my bedroom. I was scared and couldn't move because of how scared I was. I was laying on my stomach and grabbed my bat that was near my headboard. I could feel the body heat of someone next to me. Then, it dawned on me that it's probably a real person in my house. Determined to fight for my life, I held my bat tightly, turned around my hands, and screamed like a psychopath while swinging it. Get, Get the hell out of my house! Get out! Nothing. There was no one there. 
I checked my apartment and it was clear. The next day, I met my boyfriend for lunch. And he told me that he also had activity in his house around the same time the night before. He said that moments before, he felt something uh, licking him with a huge tongue. He knew it wasn't his dog because the dog sleeps in the den. He told me that he was able to punch whatever was licking him, but didn't open his eyes to look. He said that after he punched this thing, that was when something grabbed his foot and tried to pull him off his bed. He held onto his headboard for dear life. He wanted to stay over for a few days, but I didn't let him because I would die if that happened to me. The next few nights, I got even more activity. The TV in my room turned on and off over and over until I unplugged it from the wall. The next night, I was reading a book and something jumped on my bed hard, causing my body to jump. I yelled out, in the name of Jesus. About a week later, I started to get horrible nightmares. I moved out shortly after that to live with my parents in Corpus. Thankfully, whatever it was didn't follow me and I didn't experience anything while I was there. As soon as I moved back to the valley, I started getting activity in my apartment. My place has been prayed over already. But now, I want to get it blessed by a priest. That was a terrifying encounter indeed. Let us hope that our new friend has found a way to ward off the shadow people in her home. And let's not forget to leave the lights on. True Horror Stories of Texas. Until next time, stay spooky, my friends. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>